Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. I am joined on the summit today by the head football coach at Kaiser, Coach Doug Sosha, in his fifth season with the program, but it is the first season to make it to the national championship game. Coach, it's a privilege to get to visit with you today as you are heading to the NAI football championship championship game on Saturday. And it, it's been quite a ride this season, but let's go back to your most immediate game, a 38-21 victory over Grandview in the semifinal. Grandview, the number two team in the country coming in. Talk about that win and making it to the championship. Yeah, again, Joey, thanks for having me on. And, uh, you know, it's an honor to be here and, and talk about our football team and, and our kids and, and, and what this season has been and what this journey has been about. So, you know, obviously, yeah, we uh, had a chance to, uh, you know, advance and get to uh, get to go back to Iowa, you know, for the second week in a row and go back to Des Moines. And, you know, and just let me just paint the picture here a little bit. You know, we're, we're in West Palm Beach, Florida, and, and basically living in the tropics and, you know, took our football team you know, to Iowa two weeks in a row. And, and I think the first week, you know, the weather was somewhere like in the fifties. So it was really, you know, we, we were good with it. And then, you know, you get to Des Moines and we got Grandview, very, you know, rugged football team. And, uh, you know, we wake up and, and it's like minus one degrees. And, um, <laughs> you know, and, and, but I can't tell you just how proud I am of our team of just, you know, the mindset and, and, and their thought process of it, it didn't matter. We, we were going to find a way <clears throat> no matter what and got into that game, got ourselves, you know, warmed up and, you know, got a, a big stop on our first drive on defense and then, you know, had an 88-yard drive to start the game with an explosive play to Mikey Robinson to start, the, you know, the scoring. And I just felt like, you know, that game, you know, we kept momentum for most of the game. But, you know, for our kids to go there and, and play a very good brand new team and, 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 and challenge those guys. And, and, and we, had, we ran the football when we had to run the football. We had big play action, you know, explosive plays. And then defensively, we completely eliminated their their run game. And, and you know, they, they ended up throwing the football, I think, 60 times that game in a, in a, in a wintry, you know, windy game. No snow. But, uh, you know, our players have, have a mindset, have a determination, have a focus. And this is a special group. Coach, it, it's been fun to watch from afar, and I guess, hey, listen, if, if it's minus one when you get up, there's no need for snow. That's going to that's gonna have an effect one way or the other. Uh, Coach, your, your schedule has been challenging. Let's just, let's go with that word. I think that's a good word. Ten and three on the year. You played ten road games. Now, three of those have wound up being a product of the playoff run as well, but then right there at the start of the season, you face off against the defending national runners-up in uh, Division Two on the road in Georgia. And then you go on the road against another Division II team in Mississippi. Then you go on the road against a Division I team in Missouri. I mean, this was a, a, a tough tar start to the schedule. Can you can you talk about that? It, obviously, it's paid off. It, it certainly has. And, and, and obviously, you know, when we, when we put this thing together and I look at back at, you know, our original plan and, and if we we're ever going to get ourselves in position to schedule where we had some control, we, this was the phase where we were going to schedule ourselves to be challenged. And, and, and certainly, you know, we've got Valdosta State, Mississippi College from the Gulf South Conference, Lindenwood, who's just made the jump. They've been an elite D2 team. So, you know, did I think we were going to get three of those games? No. You know, I think the Lindenwood game came on late because of another team dropping off. But the, the challenge of scheduling games being down here in the South from an NAI standpoint but also with our philosophy of wanting our team to be challenged, it certainly uh, was, you know, th these were all calculated decisions that we made as, as a staff and an organization and, and an administration to go out and, and try to, you know, find some really challenging games. You know, and certainly looking back at those games, we didn't play our best, you know, and, and we went to Valdosta and, you know, played them somewhat tight, you know, really felt like there's a lot of things we look back on and, and could have certainly won that game, didn't, but, uh, you know, and then obviously going to Mississippi College and going to Lindenwood. It was a tremendous experience for our, for our guys. And then going through that patch of the season, uh, sitting at one and three, and, and, you know, obviously the opponents are the opponents, but we're sitting there with a losing record. We're not ranked anymore. I, I love the, 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 the character, the mindset in our locker room of just we're going to stay focused, we're going to come to work, and we're just going to keep battling through our schedule. And I just think the character of our football team was really shaped during some of that adverse, 
diversity right there for us. So really a special group of guys we're dealing with right now. And, and uh, it, it will build them up throughout their lives too, I'm sure, Coach. I mean, that's a, that's a big part of that as well. Uh, let's go back one game. We talked about the semifinals. Let's go back one game to the quarterfinal game against the number one team in the country. You talked about being on the road the week before there in Iowa as well. A 29-28 victory at Morningside snapped a 25-game winning streak for the Mustangs along the way. Starting quarterback Shea Spencer, who's led your team so well this season, injured in the second quarter. And Bryce Beasley comes in off the bench. You want to talk about next man up. I mean, he typified this so well. I'd love you to talk about this. He stepped in and immediately led the team on an 18-play, 74-yard drive that resulted in a touchdown. He was 17 for 29 passing, 226 yards on the day. One touchdown pass as well, which wound up being the game winner to, to Jalen Arnold and, and seal the victory there. What what a step up there. Yeah, it, tremendous. I mean, we you know, we talk about – you know, football teams are going to deal with adversity, whether it's, you know, in the locker room or with through injuries or through the ups and downs of games and, and, and obviously the just the, the journey of the season. But to watch Bryce come into that game, having prepared for every game, waiting for his opportunity, certainly, you know, we would love to play him more in other situations. We've had some different packages for him. We always have a package for Bryce, but, you know, for him to come in and have to run the whole menu of offense. And, and, and really when he came in, we didn't miss a beat and, and he was special. And I think, you know, guys around him were, were you know, energized to play and made some plays and, and Bryce is a special athlete. He obviously can throw, I think he threw for 200 plus yards in that game and, and made some key reads and, and, and throws for us, but he did some things with his feet. We had some fourth down conversions that uh, were just, you know, him making plays. And, you know, so again, we, we talked a lot about the character of that guy with our football team in terms of you don't ever know when that opportunity is coming. And here we are playing the number one team in the country. We were down at one point, 21 to three, and it was not looking good at one point. And then all of a sudden defense got a stop. We started moving the football. Shea got hurt. Quarterback steps in. So Bryce Beasley was certain a, a big piece of that and, and, and can't tell you enough about that guy just how special he is we're getting to visit now with coach doug socia from kaiser here on midwest sports net and i encourage you please like this video share the video and, and subscribe to the channel we would appreciate that it really does help we talk about small college sports and more throughout the midwest and beyond coach uh, sun conference coach of the year as well i know that's an honor along the way but one of the things too that stands out you all have not not one but two thousand yard backs this year uh, marquis spurgis who was someone we promoted here on midwest sports net at the start of the season is one of the uh, leaders coming back for this season with 1183 yards got most of that before the season was over with and then Jaden meisinger has stepped up he's picked up some along the way but he's really carried the load in the playoffs thousand and four yards but 425 of those in the three playoff games along with six touchdowns yeah i mean we're, we're lucky and, and we're blessed we're, we're, to have these two backs that are 1000 yard guys and obviously you know marquise burgess has been the, the workforce for our program and um you know he he is the state collegiate career record holder for yards in the state of florida in college football and you know he's close to 5000 yards he's been really special and and in, and just watching the bond between him and Jaden meisinger and, and you know, we take pride in running the football and, and we always talk about the establish the ability to establish the run game and everything else is going to come after that. And, you know, those two guys are special and, but certainly Jaden stepping in and, and, and really just, you know, not missing a beat and, and he's been player of the week in three straight playoff games, I think. And, you know, we played Bethel, we played Morningside and then Grandview and you know, he's been over a hundred yards and he's got multiple touchdowns and he means a lot to our team. He's one of the toughest guys I've ever been around and, but we're, we're blessed to have two guys that can really run the football. And, you know, it's, it's always going to start with those two guys. Coach, I could talk about your offense probably for another hour, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention the defense. Jalen Willis and Wendell Fillord uh, leading the way for your team, each with 10-plus tackles for loss, neither one playing on the line, and combined for seven interceptions as well. Uh, the defense has been strong this year. Absolutely. You know, and, and we always talk about it. And, and I see the game – through, the, through a defensive mindset in terms of just, I understand that going to the Midwest, being able to shut down the run game, being able to run the football, but you got to play championship level defense 
if you're going to you know win a championship and, and certainly guys like Wendell you know he's probably one of the best NAI football players in the country and, and, and he's an explosive return man that we don't even talk about a lot um, he's won games for us in that but uh, certainly a presence around the football he's explosive he's a factor in the run game he's a factor in coverage and then Jalen Willis is really the quarterback of our defense you know he's, he's an inside linebacker and, and he's you know everywhere and we're able to scheme you know for him and, and because he is such a student of the game so we've been good on defense we've got an awesome defensive line that uh, really some guys that have been here for a long time and um, you know there's a lot of good players on defense but certainly Jalen Willis and Wendell Fielder are uh, at the top. Coach, first championship appearance in program history. You've been the only coach in the five years of this program at Kaiser. And I have to ask you, was this part of the five-year plan, you know, completing a trip to the championship game? Well, certainly, you know, we, we, we try not to look at the scoreboard. We, we try not to, you know, but we, we have a plan. We have a process. It was always about getting the right people in the building. And, and we've got great administration. We've got great alignment. So, you know, if I felt like if those things were going to be aligned, you know, I know – that it, it's really hard to get to this point. And, and, and when I think about this football team, about how special this roster is, and, and maybe it's not our most talented roster, it might be, but it's it's our most special roster in, in the character and, and the talent in that locker room and the chemistry and the brotherhood that they have has really got us to this point. So certainly building the program, we felt like we could become competitive. You know, we've been competitive every year. We've gotten in the playoffs. You know, we, we had a taste of it in 2020 when we went to the Final Four and, and really, you know, got our butts kicked when we went to Lindsey Wilson and, and looked at some different things. And we adjusted our process uh, of how we did some of our off-season things. Um, but in the end of the day, it doesn't matter what organization you're talking about. It's, it's about the people in the building and the process that you follow. All right, Coach. Well, then you're going to be in the championship game. And, and the, the way you've gotten there, of course, it's been just such an incredible season, an interesting season. But then in the playoffs themselves, you, you go on the road, you take on number one, you, you beat number one. You take on number two. Next week, you beat number two. It's only fitting that you would take on number three following that. So a matchup, the first ever meeting with Northwestern Iowa. Uh, Coach, talk about this matchup. Yeah, I mean, they're a good football team. I think they're a complete football team. I think they're good in the kicking game. Um, they, are, they are stout on defense. They got some guys that fly around. And offensively, you know, they do a lot. They've got explosive players at every position. Uh, you know, their quarterback certainly makes that thing go, but they've got some wideouts and some other people that they can get the ball to. And, you know, so it, it's going to be a challenge. And, and, and I think that, you know, the matchup, you know, on the line of scrimmage is going to be key. For both teams and I think if you can win the line of scrimmage and, and get good quarterback play and you know don't make mistakes I know it's a lot of cliche stuff there but <laughs> that's what it's going to be about you know if we can you know go win the line of scrimmage and, and, and kind of do what we do and and play great defense I think you know the team that does that's going to win the football game we're going to be the national champion well, it, it looks like it's going to be a fun one to watch. That is Saturday, December 13th, and Coach will be watching here as well. Uh, Coach Doug Socia, it has been a privilege to get to visit with you today, and, and it's, it's been fun to watch you all and your players this season and talk about it here on Midwest Sportsnet. Uh, enjoy the rest of this ride, and, and I hope it's a fun one for you all on Saturday. God bless you, sir, and thank you for stopping by the summit. Hey, thank you so much, Joey, and the Midwest Sports. Thank you.